Just empty the oil that's in there out and put it right back in. That's all you do. Well, good morning, channel. Well, welcome back. It is Saturday morning. I'm gonna guess it's about 80 degrees. We might get some storms this afternoon. A little bit different video this morning. What I'm gonna be doing today is installing an oil separator on our new Bronco. And you might be asking, what the heck is an oil separator? Well, let me show you. Okay, this is an oil separator. Interesting looking gadget right here with a collection can. It's from J&L OSC, Oil Separator Company. That's what that stands for. Comes with mounting bracket. This particular one fits all of the Ford 2.7 liter V6 engines. So uh, they have those in the F-150s. They also have those in these Broncos. Um, anyway, you're asking yourself, why? What, what, what does an oil separator do? Well, I really didn't know until I read up on it. Um, it says here, you protect your investment. Um, reduces blow-by and carbon buildup, whatever that is, doesn't sound good. Maximizes performance and efficiency, okay. Simple to install, that's always good. And made in the US, that's good too. Comes with instructions, you just follow the QR code. Um, anyway, it's gonna help preserve the life. You see that little picture there, little oil just in the bottom of this canister. From what, from what I can gather, the um, exhaust or you know, air that circulates through the engine, you know, contains little bits of oil and ultimately gets in places it shouldn't get. And this thing sort of collects it and keeps it in the can until it can be emptied periodically. Um, boy, that is, that's an accountant's uh, description <laughs> of an automotive uh, upgrade, if I've ever heard one. So, sorry, I wish I knew more. I know it's gonna help maintain the life of the engine and I'm all about that. It's not hard to install. It wasn't all that expensive, so why not? So anyway, let's get started. You just gotta love a clean new engine. This is just beautiful. Gone are the days that I can seriously work on an engine. Mind you, my first engines were back in the early 80s where there was plenty of room you could instantly, just by looking down, find the oil filter. I've put in throttle bodies. I've done all kinds of things on engines. This thing, I don't know that I could get my hand in there anywhere. It's almost like a work of art, said the photographer side of me. All right, let's get started. Well, the instructions that came with the QR code have them installing it in an F-150. Like I said, it can fit multiple vehicles. That's not gonna help me. Uh, but luckily, on YouTube, a channel, Back Road Driver, great guys, they have a first edition Bronco, it's beautiful. They put one of these on and they have, it's sort of an installation video for one of these and a few other accessories. Uh, good video, I'm gonna post a link to that video right up here. Uh, anyway, gonna use their video to, to help me get started here. It's this hose right here that we're gonna be replacing. You got one end here, goes around the other end here, very simple. You know, first step is to take this hose off. 
just love having a vehicle so high up that you got to get a set of steps to reach what you're trying to reach. That's awesome. All right, to take this uh, hose off, it's real simple. There's some uh, blue clips here. Um, you reach on the back and let's see, you do something with the blue clips, that's for sure. Oh, there it is. Yeah, there's a little tab on the back that seems to loosen it up. And then it pops right off. Uh, yeah. Yeah, those tabs just loosen up the hole, the connector, and then it comes off. I'm glad I could make that look a lot more hard for you than it really should have been. Just these little tabs. And it comes right off. Gonna hang on to this in case I ever need it. All right, to mount the canister, we're gonna use this control module mount right here. There's two screws at the top of it, silver screws, um, bolts that you just take out and then the bracket lifts up. Looks like the bolts are 5 sixteenths. Just get a 5 cents fixed, 5 sixteenths inch uh, socket and they'll come right out. All right, that is the bolt that just came out of that bracket over there. There's two of them. So we've got those out. Let's lift the bracket out and go to the next step. All right, once you take those two mounting bolts out, this thing just lifts right up and comes out. And it gives you access to this bolt here on the side. Now this bolt is a looks like a welded bolt with a nut that comes off the bottom. Now we're gonna mount the bracket. We're gonna mount the bracket to the bottom of this bolt, put the nut back on, tighten it up. We want it low because we wanna keep this low enough in the engine that it doesn't hit, you know, the roof and far enough in where, you know, the roof comes down a little further on the side here, but uh, further in, there's indentions. So it'll fit perfectly in there. So we got to get it forward and down so that it doesn't hit the roof when you close the, uh, the hood when you close the hood. So, all right, I'm going to take off that nut. I'm going to slide this on. I'm going to put the nut back on and tighten it down. All right, the nut on the bottom of this control module bracket is a 10 millimeter nut so that's what you get to take it off right here all right got that nut on now i'm going to tighten it up doesn't have to be super tight just make it snug okay bracket installed all right now we're going to reattach this control module bracket where it goes Right there, put these two silver bolts back in. I'm gonna start them by hand, finish them up with my, what I say that was, 5 sixteenths? Yep, 5 sixteenths. All right, that's reinstalled, reinstalled. Everything's ready to go. I think next we attach the canister to this. All right, we're gonna mount the canister on here. Fits right underneath. Um, and you're gonna wanna mount it such that the logo on the bracket and the logo on the canister are in the same direction, okay? And you got some screw holes here. We're gonna hand thread these screws one at a time and not tight them up and tighten them up until we get them both uh, in there. All right, once you've got them threaded in by hand, you can go ahead and use a screwdriver, um, just a regular hand screwdriver because you don't want to over tighten these. The canister is aluminum, so you got to be careful there. You can feel when they get tight, just snug them down. They don't have to be super tight. That ought to do it. Canister mounted to the bracket, 
Next step, I think we connect the hoses. All right, to connect the hoses, we're gonna start with a hose that is coming out of um, the side of the canister that's facing in the engine right now and has the 90 degree turn on the connection. There's two types of connections. One of them is 90 degrees here, and the other one is not 90 degrees. We're, we're talking about the 90 degree one. I'm gonna route it underneath all this existing hose, all these existing hoses right now, and it's gonna fit on this connector, the lower one, uh, or the one closest to the outside of the vehicle, the brown one, not the white one. This 90 degree is gonna fit on the brown one. All right, that was easy. It just snapped right in. You push it, you feel it, you feel it, and you hear it snap, and it's in place. And like I said, I just routed it under these existing hoses. It fits very comfortably all the way back up here. All right, the other hose has a 45 degree angle. Very similar, I'm gonna route it underneath here, and it's gonna go up and connect right here to the white, and it just snaps right in. Get it under here, bring it around there, get it on there, and just snaps right in. That's it. And you are pretty much done with this installation. Fairly simple to do. It looks factory, as they said on Back Road Driver. They said that as well. Those guys are very helpful. They helped me through this. Go check out their video. They'll help you through it as well. I echo a lot of what they say, so use either one, but they clearly are more experienced at this, so check them out. Anyway, I think that's it. And so I'm told, guys, that when you get your oil change in your vehicle, uh, ask whoever's doing your oil change, or if it's you, to uh, empty your catch can here. And it's real easy. This thing just unscrews, it's literally unscrews the bottom part of this canister. And when you pull it out and look in it, you're going to have some dirty, spent oil down in the bottom of that a little bit. Just empty it out, screw it back in. Uh, I'm told you're not supposed to wash it out with water or anything like that. Just empty the oil that's in there out and put it right back in. That's all you do. All right, now that it's installed, we're going to lower the hood and see. It's going to come in contact with that felt, but there's a good inch or so behind that felt of room. So I think we're going to be okay. Just close the lid here, and I'm sorry, it's probably hard to see. Yeah, just touches when you hit that latch on the hood. So when you press the hood down, I imagine it went down another inch, and it's pushing on that felt just a little bit, but no issues there. So, all right, I think that's going to wrap it up, guys. Thanks for joining me today. Um, Happy to get this in. I hope it helps the car. I hope it helps the environment. And uh, we'll see you again soon with another video. Until then, ride safe and God bless.